Hi there. In this video, I wanted to talk about serial correlation, but serial correlation as a symptom of omitted variable bias. Okay, so let's think about a particular example. So let's say we worked for an ice cream retailer, and for that particular retailer, we had some data on their sales. So I'm going to sort of represent that by our sort of y-axis here. And um, we had these sort of ice cream sales over time. And perhaps we had some data which looked something like this. So perhaps we have maybe one and a bit years worth of data. So we sort of had data which perhaps I'll make it a bit more noisy than that. But let's say that's the sort of data we have for the sort of sales by week or sales by month. Okay, and let's say as well we had some data on, let's say, the price of the product over time. And let's say as well, we had the level of advertising or the type of advertising spend over time. And as a sort of first attempt, we fitted a model which was ice cream sales at a given time is dependent on the, let's say the price level at that particular time, as well as the level of advertising at that time. And if we were to fit this particular model to our above data, perhaps it would do a reasonable job of explaining some of the variations in sales. So perhaps it would pick up sort of two times where the price of the product dipped uh, or the price of the product increased rather. So these sort of two dips in sales, which we see here and here. So it's explaining some of the variance in sales over time. But importantly, we are gonna find that our model actually has serial correlation. If you look and do the sort of LN test or you do the Durban Watson test, both tests are going to pick up at least first order serial correlation because we're actually going to have runs of positive residuals where our model is under predicting and then runs of negative residuals like these ones here. And that's the sort of definition of serial correlation to some degree. It's when you have runs of positive and negative errors. And um, so this is indicative of a sort of AR1 process where our error at time t is related to our error at time t minus 1. So this sort of row here in our AR1 process would be greater than 0. Don't worry if you don't understand what an AR1 process is, I just wanted to include it here for completeness. But suffice to say that we find that our error at time t was related to our error at time t minus 1 because if we know that I make a sort of positive error at time t, like this one here, I'm likely also to make a positive error for the next period, let's say. Okay, so is this indicative of true sort of population serial correlation, or is this indicative of some other factor? Well, in this particular circumstance, it's probably indicative of the fact that we've omitted a key variable. Can you think what that variable might be? So don't worry if you didn't get which variable I was sort of thinking about here. But the variable which I was sort of thinking about was actually a sort of seasonal variable. So that could be a measure of temperature, that could be a measure of, let's say, just the month of the year. But it's very likely that ice cream sales and our sort of data shows that here are sort of seasonally trended. So we know that advertising is correlated with the time of the year because ice cream companies tend to advertise at times of the year when they're more likely to sell more of the product. So that's likely hotter times of the year. So in our original model, the effect which we get of advertising, which is given by this sort of beta two here, is likely going to be biased because we've omitted a key variable, which is that of sort of, let's say, temperature from our model. And once we do include this sort of omitted variable temperature, our model will do a lot better job of explaining the variation in ice cream sales. So perhaps it would do something like this, right? So our model now is sort of picking up the variations in ice cream sales, which sort of occur naturally throughout the year because of, let's say, weather or because of people's tastes. Okay, so in this circumstance, we have found that serial correlation is actually indicative, not of true population serial correlation, but it's actually being caused by some sort of imperfection in our model, namely the fact that we didn't include a measure of temperature or time of the year in our model. And then once we include that measure of time of year or temperature, our model does a lot better job of predicting the dependent variable 
and also it alleviates the sort of omitted variable bias which we were seeing before we included this important variable. So another really sort of important lesson here is the fact that we shouldn't just jump in and correct our errors which we get from our original regression for the presence of serial correlation because we're still going to have some degree of omitted variable bias. What we should do is have a sort of think about what are the other important variables which could be causing this serial correlation to occur and then only then after we've exhausted all of those potential avenues should we then start to think about how we correct our errors for the presence of serial correlation or we transform to a new model space where we don't have serial correlation. In the next video I'm going to talk about heteroscedasticity and how we correct for the presence of heteroscedasticity in our model. I'll see you then.